I'm very disturbed because it's too little, too late, and definitely not what was necessary. I just would like to recall the words of the Pope when he came to the European Parliament and spoke about the fact that we are allowing the Mediterranean to turn into a huge uh, graveyard. Uh, the Pope said that human life cannot be seen as a trade, object of trade. I mean, these European governments, uh, the same that are allowing uh, some of the member states to sell golden visas for a green way for uh, rich foreigners to come into the EU are the ones actually not doing what is necessary to save lives in the Mediterranean. We need it, first and foremost, a European coordinated action in the framework of the uh, CSDP, Security and Defence uh, poli Common Policy of the EU, to actually uh, save lives in the Mediterranean, to mobilize our navies, our coastal guards, our aer aerial means, to actually identify the, the, the people and save and the boats and save lives right and foremost. Then of course we needed an integrated common migration policy in order not to continue to give a, a, a profit to the new sclavagists that are the human being traffickers who organize these uh, uh, murderous uh, uh, crossings of the Mediterranean with migrants and refugees. And then we need, of course, a common asylum policy as the uh, uh, UNHCR has been calling for and this parliament has been calling for to actually distribute in a fairer way the uh, many people that are coming because many, most of those who are coming are coming to save their lives. They're coming from wars in Syria, in, uh, in uh, oppression in Ethiopia, Eritrea, the situation in Gaza, the lawlessness in um, in Libya and far away, I mean, places like Nigeria, uh, where there is terrorism and misery because of that. So we need also a European integrated foreign policy that indeed helps create uh, uh, an area of uh, peace, security and prosperity in our neighborhood and far away. Because some of our policies, namely the foreign policy, are probably responsible for actually helping uh, 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 um, make people leave their countries uh, and not finding the right conditions to stay in their countries. Mrs. Gomes, what European Union can do to stabilize the situation in Libya and Syria? Because they are two major countries where there are catastrophe, humanitarian catastrophe, that pushes people to flee. Well, in both countries, my criticism to the EU and to the European uh, government is for what, for what they didn't do not what they have done in the case of Libya. I think it was good that European countries came in in a NATO mission to actually help uh, the people of Libya who were fighting Gaddafi from uh, executing the massacre that he threatened. But what was wrong is that the EU afterwards did not do what was essential. And I have seen it and said it and wrote it as a standing rapporteur of this parliament for Libya in the last five years. I went there during the war, I went there after the war, and I said the crucial thing that the EU must do is indeed to concentrate in helping Libya build a proper uh, security forces under national command, police and security and, and armed forces, because there were none, they were only existing in name. Not allowing, for instance, the militia to stay around as the only providers of security and insecurity. It was obvious from the beginning that these militia were going to be sooner or later infiltrated by criminal networks and by terrorists. Uh, the EU has tremendous responsibilities. Several member states did not allow in the EU to do what the European Parliament had recommended, which was again to, or uh, to organize a CSTP mission to help indeed the Libyans reorganize their security sector. And uh, uh, these member states prefer to do business as they had done with Gaddafi, you know, placing their advisors in different ministries and each one trying to influence the Libyan authorities to sell equipment, to uh, go about all contracts and so on. Of course, this is no way to work uh, in favor of European security. Uh, and it's no way to work in a coordinated manner as you would require. And uh, in my opinion, 
this is the main reason why we face ourselves in this situation. We are now with Libya becoming indeed a sanctuary for terrorism, a lawlessness state where there is no real state. And despite the many requests that came from the Libyans, I remember former Prime Minister Ali Zidane coming all the way to this parliament and even to NATO in despair, demanding exactly this kind of support. And the Europeans pretended not to hear. And See the result now, Libya transformed in this uh, uh, ground uh, for no lawlessness, mind. for terrorist and criminal activity, uh, obviously directed at the EU. And in the case of Syria, I also blame the EU for non-action. I know that the Security Council is blocked. We absolutely need reform of the Security Council so that it won't be blocked in such a glaring case of uh, uh, upholding the international law, uh, and namely human rights, and indeed uh, discharging its responsibility on security and peace. Uh, but we had talk in the EU of humanitarian corridors, we had talk of uh, no-fly zones, and nothing happened. And of course, by nothing happening, we have uh, allowed that all these people who have been now and were in neighboring countries, it, by the millions, and of course, uh, this is no situation that can lead to more security, be it in the region, be it for the EU. On the contrary, this, in, for instance, when we visited recently Lebanon, a number of us from the Foreign Affairs Committee, we realized that in a country like Lebanon that hosts over one million refugees from Syria, most of the children of these uh, refugee community are not able to go to school. If you're not able to go to school, and if our assistance is not making schools available to these children, obviously uh, they're not going to be prepared to one day rebuild their country, and they're not, they are actually being prepared to be uh, easy uh, recruited, uh, recruited uh, people by all sorts of terrorist and radical networks. So, I'm sorry to say, but uh, what I see in the EU at this moment, and I'm very pro-European, I'm very disturbed and, and worried with a lack of uh, strategic vision on the part of EU leaders to take what the measures that are necessary, be it in external policy, in security, and in concrete measures to save lives in the Mediterranean uh, and, and to indeed uh, accept that migrants and, and refugees are not going to be uh, stopped by any kind of security measures, that they need the right integrated policies that will not, uh, that will make them will to stay and they have conditions to stay in their countries and not try to come to Europe to save their lives.